So since the last time we spoke, there has been a bit of work done on the Mini. On top of that, I'm gonna need some help with some stuff, but we'll get into that a little bit later. But right now, we are outside the same garage that we were before. Um, this is the little alleyway by my hotel, and behind that door is the Mini that we spoke about last time. Firstly, thanks to everyone that's jumped on the video from last time. So, so good to see so many of you watching my videos. Loving it. But right now, I'm gonna get behind that door, see how the Mini's looking. We've had the engine out, we've had the bottom end off, and we'll see what other problems we've found. Now, I was hoping to get this engine out myself and learn how to do that. Unfortunately, work got in the way and I had to get away with wandering icons, but Michael jumped in and he's gone ahead and pulled the engine for us. And it only took a few hours, so, I was away filming a video that will be up next on the channel about wandering icons in our Land Rovers. But whilst I was, I was away, I called Michael, asked him if he could get the engine out and the bottom end off, the crank off. And yeah, he tore through it in a few hours. Um, we've broken an engine mount on the front of the car that needs re-welding. But other than that, everything went fairly straightforward for us. Crank came out, we've been able to look up through the engine at the pistons from this end. There doesn't appear to be any damage on the pistons, so that's great news. I think we'd had enough of bad news last week. Uh, I feel like all I've done is make videos on everything that's wrong with this Mini. But, moving forwards, new parts ordered from M&M Classic Mini Spares in Warrington. Paul's been super, super useful uh, with me. I've been bouncing WhatsApp messages back and forth with him. He's kind of told me what I need. We've got a new crank. We've got a new clutch. We've got a new flywheel. We've got a few other perishable parts going in here, a few oil seals and other things going on the engine as well. Um, new oil pump because someone mentioned in the comments that whilst the engine is at this stage, it's good to get the oil pump done. So we're gonna do that. Now, a couple of you did mention putting in the lightened flywheel, the uprated clutch, and I really wanna do it, but I'm gonna choose just to get the car running first. The last thing I wanna do is go and throw in a load of expensive car parts in this car when we haven't even had it running properly since we bought it. Once that's done, 100%. And the other thing I wanna mention very quickly as well is, that last video that we did on the Mini absolutely exploded for my tiny little channel. And what it's meant is, the revenue that we've generated off that is going straight in to buying new parts for this car. So everyone that subscribes is helping me get this thing back on the road and I super appreciate that. So when the engine was removed, unfortunately one of the engine mounts has snapped. I think it was just a bit of a beginner mistake by the mechanic and I don't see it as being the end of the world, probably a little bit of weld, but if this has ever happened to you, have you strengthened it when you've put it back in? Anything else worth doing? Should I replenish any of the rubbers on the en engine mounts or anything whilst it's out as well? Yeah, any other helpful info I could get on that would be very useful at this point because I don't want to be taking out this engine again. And whilst we're on the subject of not taking the engine out again, what do you think I should do to this engine bay to future-proof it? I am keen to keep it its original blue, but I don't know whether to cover it in wax oil or some sort of protectant that's just going to stop it from rusting, especially as we live on the west coast of Scotland, on the beach, where it is corrosive and abrasive. Not the best mix for classic cars. Also saw something called cold galvanized spray. Used that before. So these are all things I'm gonna kind of look into and see what we can do with the engine bay. I've had a look at the subframes. They're in really good condition. I was a little bit worried after reading some of your comments on the other things that I missed. And to be honest with you, you know, someone said, oh, you can't have taken it for a proper test drive. I've never had a Mini before, and I made some really bad mistakes with this, but I didn't give it the full going over like I should have done, but as well as that, I didn't really 
know how powerful a mini engine should be. And when I was told it was backfiring just because it was cold, I chose to believe the previous owner. However, we now have figured out why all those things happened. We're gonna move on and we're gonna carry on fixing up this little car. Right, I've done a lot of dickish things when I bought this car and one of them wasn't even getting underneath it to see how bad it was. So, oh, look at that, it's solid. That was lucky, wasn't it? Yeah, I seem to have got very lucky with the underside of this car. Um, I honestly don't know what I was doing when I bought it. I just, I, the last time I bought a car, I spent an hour and a half going around it, checking everything. And I turned up to this polished, beautiful little blue mini, and I must have just lost my mind. Um, but as I say, we've got very lucky with the bodywork and have I learnt my lesson? I hope so. I hope I never turn up to another car that I know nothing about without either taking someone who does know what they're talking about or I do my research and I go over that car with a fine tooth comb no matter how much I like the owners. I did find a little bit of rust. It's not crazy, it's not immediate, but in the rear of the car under the horrendous subwoofer that was in there, and the carpet and the wood and everything else it was buried under were a couple of small holes in the floor of the boot area. So that will need fixing at some point. I've looked at replacement panels, but I don't, it's not that bad. It's, it's, it's actually pretty good. So something for down the line, but if you can give me any advice on that, I would appreciate it as always. So gearbox, pretty good condition overall. Coming down here, there is our crank, which was completely chewed up at the end, way beyond repair or anything we could have put back in. So M&M spares are sending that out. Coming back up here, what we got? We got the crankcase, we've got our flywheel. Internally on this, it was really, really chewed up as well. So all of this is getting replaced, but everything is sat here. Everything's ready to go back in and um, looking forward to putting it back together with Michael once the parts arrive. One thing I did notice was all this, what looks like rust, but it's not on the uh, subframe or the car itself. It's, it's like rusty water. So coming back round to this engine, I mean, this end has kind of corroded a little bit. And um, yeah, that'll all need to be replaced, I think. So we'll get a new part for that as well. But the other thing I noticed was the rad. I think the rad at some point has kind of maybe blown. I don't know. What is that indicative of that rust all over the outside of the radiator? Now, whilst we're waiting for the parts from M&M Classic Mini Spares, we're gonna jump inside and talk about what we're gonna do with some of the interior on the Mini and some of the new toys I've bought to make that interior. Right, whilst we're out, I will show you the, um, the race seats that I got, which is parked in one of my other money pits. I think it's this one. Let's have a look. Nope. Yep, here we are. We got two of these Corbo Forza Sport 2000s and they're pretty much perfect. I picked them up again from Classic Mini Spares in Warrington and I've got to say that, that if you've ever been to Classic Mini Spares in Warrington, it's like walking into an Aladdin's cave. There is so much stuff in there. Um, from full chassis, engines, there were about, there must have been a hundred sets of seats that I could have chosen from. I've got bucket seats in the Mini which are way too small and I tried a full set of bucket seats that didn't work. So after I'd spoken to Paul, he's told me these will fit with the shoulders and I can still shut the doors and they definitely look the part. They're actually in such good nick, I'm kind of, almost swaying to keep them as they are. 
I was really tempted to re-upholster these in like a vintage brown leather. Let me know what you think. Keep them original or change them. I'm also currently getting ready for a little TV show that shows on the BBC with some of my other toys. 10 points if you can guess what it is. Now, one thing that I'm really keen to kind of upgrade on the interior of the Mini is this center console. So if you saw the first video and if you haven't jumped back to it, this is something Martin and his dad designed for the car to throw in a head unit. However, things are kind of moved on a little bit and I don't even feel like we need a head unit. I'm gonna order a Bluetooth receiver to run to the speakers. As well as that, we're gonna try and get the wood thinned down because there's a lot of weight in that that we don't need. And a couple of other things, definitely need a coffee holder. And also I'm thinking a wireless charger, which I'm gonna design with this. And that is my CNC table. So I purchased this in at the back end of 2023. And the point of getting the table was I could start making custom parts for the classic cars and the Land Rovers. I'm thinking a first project will be really good to make is the wood for this, maybe design this with some extra dials in it. But I'd love to know what you think I need as extras are in that mini in terms of information. Now, I'm fully aware that that's gonna make me worry more about the car if any of those dials start playing up, but I think it'd be a cool little project. If you're looking for a new toy for your workshop, a CNC table is an awesome addition. They have become a lot more affordable. However, don't be fooled. These things do take a lot of research, a lot of learning to be able to get to the point where you can start making parts for your cars, but definitely look into it. Another little hobby I found myself dabbling in is 3D printing and design. I really do feel like this is going to be something that becomes very popular with classic car owners. Why am I talking about 3D printing on a classic car channel? Well, one of the biggest reasons is I feel like the market for classic cars is going to start going towards 90s and noughties cars rather than what we on this channel kind of consider a classic. And I know this is going to be a super unpopular opinion, but I also think over the next 10 years, you're going to see uh, more of a decline of parts for the cars like the GT6 and the Carmen Gear and more manufacturers, especially classic car manufacturers will start moving into that 90s and noughties range. So where does that leave us? there's gonna be parts that we can't get hold of. And one thing with new technologies that are coming in, like 3D printing, like 3D scanning, which we'll also be making videos about, is it means that we can start making parts for our own cars. Now at the moment, don't get me wrong, there is a steep learning curve. I made this push through hubcap for the GT6 about two years ago, and learning 3D CAD and then converting it to a 3D print and getting everything done was a long process. However, that technology is coming on in leaps and bounds at the moment. And I really don't think we're that far off from being at a point where everyone can start printing their own 3D parts for their cars. The things I wanna start making for the Mini kind of immediately are a phone holder that will go into that console that's sat behind me. Um, I want to incorporate a wireless version of that so I can literally get in, stick my phone on the dash, it connects to a Bluetooth system and it's good to go. But I also want it to be done in a way that really lends itself to the aesthetic of a Mini rather than looking at something like we have been doing for the last 20 years with an ugly head unit from Halfords that doesn't really lend itself to these beautiful old cars. Now, I think we can all agree I've made quite a few mistakes with this Mini. The way I bought it and the way I kind of launched myself into it, the way I do with absolutely everything. And to be honest with you, I was really on the cusp last week of either getting rid of it or making that video. And I'm so glad I made the video because it's given me more confidence to kind of go back into this and we've got the mechanic this week michael's taken the engine out so things are moving forwards like so many classic car pro projects if you don't keep pushing it it ends up dying and just sitting there for months and months and months another thing i've done is i've gone out and gone got the mini workshop manual 